Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Reverend Ellen Rasmussen, Senior Pastor at Brown Deer United Methodist Church, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And it is a great joy to welcome you to our worship experience this morning. Thank you for choosing to be here. We're continuing with our Beguiled by Beauty series, Cultivating a Life of Contemplation and Compassion. And this morning, we are asking God to break through, to show us God's beauty already at work in the world so that we can connect to it, to gain strength, to soothe our soul, to heal. Beauty is not a luxury. Beauty is what all of us need in our lives. And so we're asking God to break through and show us God's beauty. And we invite you to have God break through in your life as well as we pray our breakthrough prayer. Won't you join me? The words will be on your screen. Breakthrough to us, ever creating God, I say again, breakthrough. You who are creating in and through us a new beloved community, transform our whatevers of resistance into the holy whatevers of justice, healing, and hope. Empowered by your immeasurable love and grace, let us do more than we can possibly ask or imagine through Christ who strengthens us for this adventure and the beloved, cherished children of God shout, Amen. One thing I ask of you, divine goodness, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life, to gaze on your beauty and to meditate in your temple. In the beginning, the Creator was beguiled by beauty and so set in motion a world of immense beauty and goodness. All beings are beautiful, full of the essence of sacred worth, sensed not by the eyes, but with the spirit, awakening to beauty, falling in love with the world. Divine beauty shimmers and shimmies through the universe and in every barrio where someone is singing or weeping. Because of beauty, our spirits are enlivened. Dr. Wendy Farley, are you ready for new life? Divine goodness, prepare my spirit to see and be beguiled by the beauty of life. Amen. If you so choose, you may light a candle at this time.
You are invited to a moment of quiet rest, a time of slowing the pace of your body and mind so that the spirit can settle. Welcome to a time of silent centering. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We embrace the brokenness of our lives. We believe you are creating new light that will shine through. We open to your possibilities and the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. Good morning. Again, I'm Beverly J.K. and it's so good to be with you again this morning. Um, this is the time where we're inviting all of God's children to come on down, whether you're, the, you're little, whether you're big, all of us are God's children. We're being reminded this summer how beautiful the world is and everything and everyone in it. In our search for beauty, today we are looking for an object that is broken or imperfect. How can something broken be beautiful? This week, the Bible tells us that God takes care of broken things. Can you see something that is broken somewhere around you? Let's find something right now. Do you see something? Okay, so I want to teach you a fun word today. It is a Japanese word, wabi-sabi. Let's say that together, wabi-sabi. What a fun word. And what it means is also really wonderful. Wabi-sabi is the idea that 
everything is beautiful. Even things that are imperfect, things that might've been broken or made in an unusual way. In fact, this Japanese idea says that the imperfections or out of the ordinary makes things more interesting and special. There's also the ancient art of repairing broken things with gold that's called kintsugi. Instead of hiding the cracks, gold is put there to show us the beautiful design that the crack made. Have you ever heard, and I'm sorry, have you ever had to put a Band-Aid on a cut or a small scrape? Or have you or someone you know ever broken a bone and had to wear a cast? We love to color on casts or wear band-aids that are colorful and fun. This week, we have made it, we have made a coloring page for you that shows a broken bowl with cracks in it. You're invited to color this in any way you want. Whatever colors will show, it's beauty. If you're a little older, like even the adult children of God, you're invited to journal a bit on the coloring page, writing your thoughts about the broken parts of life that you'd like God to help you see as opportunities to be changed and seen as beautiful. The beauty of life includes all things. Please join me in this repeat after me prayer. God of goodness, Thank you for life. Even when things break, help me help you repair broken hearts, offer color and love for the beauty of the earth. Amen. Our Lectio Divina, that's the ancient practice of contemplating sacred text. It comes from Psalm 147 today. I would invite you to imagine that these words are directed at the exiles who find themselves in need of an encouraging word. In this Psalm, the Divine One, Yahweh, is the source of restoration, of binding wounds, of bringing sustenance and life to all living things, especially those who are suffering. There are many ways to feel exiled from familiar and beloved places and people. May you drink in these hopeful words, knowing like, like the stars, divine goodness, knows each of our names. So now from Psalm 147, verses one to 11 in the inclusive Bible. How good it is to praise our God. It is a pleasure to make beautiful praise. Yahweh rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers Israel's exiles. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God knows the number of the stars and calls each one by name. Great is Yahweh and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. Yahweh lifts up the oppressed and casts the corrupt to the ground. Sing to our God with thanksgiving. Sing praise with the harp to our God who covers the heavens with clouds and provides rain for the earth, who makes grass sprout on the mountains and herbs for the service of the people, who gives food to the cattle and to young ravens when they cry. God does not thrill to the strength of the horse or revel in the fleetness of humans. Yahweh delights in those who worship with reverence and put their hope in divine love. 
Amen. Thank you, Joe. Good morning again, everyone. It is a great joy to celebrate God with you today. I want to share some of the beauty that I experienced this weekend on the cruise throughout the Apostle Islands. And so here are some scenes from Devil's Island with the caves underneath. Enjoy. We give thanks for the gift of the Apostle Islands and for the cruise that took me out to Devil's Island this past uh, Friday. And so the video was on silence, but the, did that enhance or interfere with the beauty that you experienced? As you watch, could you imagine the sounds of the water? Could you see and hear the wind as it moved the trees? When the wind is flowing through those caves underneath the Devil's Island, they make this noise, this shrieking, piercing, uncomfortable noise, which is why our first peoples named this island Devil's Island, even though it is part of the Apostle Island. We give thanks for the beauty. We give thanks that the weather was so great that we could actually travel out that far to Devil's Island. And it was a joy to be celebrating with people uh, this cruise of the season. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, for this opportunity to bring honor, glory, and praise to you. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us, helping us to open our hearts, minds, and souls to receive you this day. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, and together the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. So our psalmist is sharing, <coughs> excuse me, about the glory of God and praising God. The last five psalms of, of what is we can, in the uh, Protestant canon are called the daily halal. So if we're our Jewish siblings, these psalms are recited every day um, before the morning service. These last five psalms about glorifying God, giving praise to God, thanking God for all that is and what, uh, what has been, what is, and what will be. The psalm was written to a people who had once been exiled and were now rebuilding their lives. And so we can see how the experience influenced the writing of this psalm. God heals those broken in spirit and in body. That is the exiles, right? Something horrific has happened. And now they're trying to regain a normal life. Sound familiar? We often say we're in unprecedented times. We have a God for unprecedented times, a God who knows that we will face heartbreak, that we will face pain, we will face suffering, we will mourn, but we will also rejoice, we'll experience blessing, we'll experience life, we'll experience healing, and we'll move into a new wholeness. 
The psalmist reminds us of this, that, that when God remember, God is named every one of the stars. And you know, we can't see near all of them, right? We just, uh, just a smidgen of the universe, but God has named every one of them. And in that statement, because God is a paying attention to naming each one of those stars, it's a reminder that God cares about each and every one of us. God cares for all of the creation. God created an ecologically harmonious world in which creatures are cared for. The psalmist keeps stressing this. This is God's world. And there is a place for each and every one. And there is a call for each and every one. And there are gifts, talents, and graces bestowed upon each and every one. One of the things, one of the gifts that we are able to experience is the gift of recognizing beauty. Have you ever thought about beauty? Your soul needs beauty. My soul needs beauty. Our souls need beauty. <clears throat> Our spirits cannot thrive without beauty. Just like we need daily bread, well, perhaps we need daily roses as well. We need beauty to not just survive, but to thrive. So what is beauty? Have you heard the phrase, beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Beauty cannot be possessed. Pretty things can be possessed. Artwork can be possessed. Cars can be possessed. Clothing, right? Those can all, beauty cannot be possessed. How many of you are morning people and have, <laughs> I, I laugh folks because all the panelists raised their hand and they also know I'm not the morning person, but being on the occasions I have been out for sunrises and the joy that I get when people send me pictures of sunrises they experience is breathtaking. I just, so it, it's just incredible. The gift new every morning is your love, great God of light and how it appears as the sun greets the day. That's beauty. And everyone has the opportunity to see the sun rise. As we also see the sun set and I've seen some gorgeous sunsets. And when I lived in the North Woods, I got to see glimpses of the Northern Lights. And I experienced incredible beauty living in the North Woods in the winter. I would go out on my patio all bundled up in the night and my light that shone was from the moon and the stars and it would reflect off the snow and the icicles in the tree. It was like they were all decorated just for me. And it would take my breath away to see and recognize this beauty in the stillness of the night. And then I also discovered the night's not really still. There's a lot of light. These are re representative of some of the gifts of beauty that God gifts us with so that our soul can mend, our soul can heal. Being able to identify beauty is a soul experience. Art and creativity open underground rivers in our soul. They give us enormous pleasure. They open us to rich layers of meaning, symbol and myth. They help us criticize what is wrong with society and celebrate what is right. I share those words from Reverend or Professor Allie Utley. Having the gift to recognize beauty is what keeps us going. In the darkest of times, 
When we can recognize beauty, we recognize hope. One of my greatest joys is my ch children's laughter. And now I get to experience the laughter and the coos of my grandchildren. In the midst of whatever is going on, to hear my grandson Joey giggle or Abby laugh and her whole body is going or to listen to my children tell stories and laugh with each other, there's nothing more precious to me. And I know all can be right. It's the same experience when I get to rock a baby. How many of you, when you hold a baby, automatically do this or this? Is it, I don't even know, is it possible to stand still while holding a baby? And if it's a newborn baby, you know, they got that smell, that incredible smell, right? These are things that have worked for me, that bring me great peace. And I know there are a multitude of options for each and every one as I listen to music, especially some of the great classics, I feel like I get to transcend time. And the beauty of music soothes my soul. That's why I give such thanks to our music ministry and Mr. Jim Lingle and his editing because music transcends our barriers and gets to our soul. And when we think about how music can break through any situation, I invite you to reflect upon the beauty of African-American spirituals. Spirituals created in a, during a horrendous time of slavery, of families being torn apart, of people living in, in conditions we would not accept today. And there was beauty and hope in the power of the song. And then there's the storytelling. How many of you listen to, to great storytellers? You've got storytellers in your families. And the creation of the story helps us connect to beauty, helps us open to our eyes, the eyes of our heart, the eyes of our soul. And this all helps bring and build resilience. From these, Wendy Farley, I share, in our own time, we desperately need the spiritual resilience to encounter defeat and continue loving. We may well face the end of life on earth as we have known it, we need to work and pray in such a way that we never turn aside from our commitment to respond to crisis of our time or the demands of our personal lives. We are required to live both actively and peacefully in order to nurture compassionate relationship with the tragedy and beauty of existence. Leonard Cohen shares, and even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue, but hallelujah. Anguish or anger or despair may make beauty seem irrelevant or even a selfish distraction. But beauty is necessary for our survival. Beauty is necessary for all of us to thrive. Beauty is necessary to build beloved community. Beauty is all around us. We practice opening our eyes, our hearts, our minds, and our souls to witness beauty, to see how God is at work in the world. And we take those moments 
and we take them in and we say, as our souls are healed and we're invited to continue on in the adventure of life. I hope and pray that beauty surrounds you, that you're always able to grasp and recognize the gifts of beauty in whatever form they appear to you. And I hope that you can fall in love with the beauty that surrounds you and may your soul be awakened to this beauty and to this love. As we prepare for our Visio Divina, today I offer this haiku. Unrest surrounds us. Seek beauty in brokenness. See through the eyes of hope. Good morning. I am Pastor Ann. Uh, some of those pictures uh, were of, uh, of little ones that I think only a mother could love. Um, they were some ugly little things at one point, but <laughs> God bless it. Wasn't that a wonderful, wonderful um, video? Um, I'd like to join with you in prayer now. So would you bow with me? Gracious God, Oh, Holy One, you know our thoughts, you know our needs and our prayers before we even form them. We come before you in praise and thanksgiving. How magnificent is the work of your hand. How wonderful it is to be called your children. And how thankful we are for your presence in our lives. I pray, oh God, that you pour out your blessing upon us. The challenges of the past year have left so many parts of our lives broken and bruised. 
Help us to see the beauty in each new day as we slowly move toward our new normals. Bless those still without jobs, those who continue the fight against health issues left behind by their bout fighting COVID-19. Bless those grieving the loss of loved ones, those whose businesses continue to face tough times. Bless medical responders who have fought and continue to fight to care for the ill. And bless the many houses of worship facing the known and unknown that lies ahead. I pray, oh God, that you would send your healing upon the family members and friends of those trapped in the condo collapse near Miami. And those suffering loss due to weather catastrophes around our world. Be with the emergency responders, keep them safe, make their efforts fruitful. Jesus told us that we do not receive because we do not ask. Therefore, O oh God, we join our hearts and our minds and ask that you hear each of these prayers. And in particular, touch these, our friends and family, with your healing and your grace. For Bob, Pastor Paul, Robert, Roger, Bonnie, Marianne, Doug, Sam, Doug, Alan, Anna, James, Christine. For Jimmy, Catherine, Debbie, and the Matisic family. Audrey, Caroline. And for everyone who is struggling with stress, depression, and other challenges. And now, O oh God, in silence, we also lift before you these prayers of our hearts. Hear all these prayers, O oh God, as we join together now in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. My friends, as a participant in our online circles of connection, um, which use Zoom, I'm in a couple of those, um, it allows participants both near and far to participate. And in those, I, as a participant, I will affirm the importance they have in my faith walk. And I believe that it, it also is happening for others who participate. There is nothing as fulfilling as learning together about our faith and life lessons and sharing each other's concerns and prayer. These circles are an important part of the ministries of Brown Deer United Methodist Church. Our gifts of presence and finances help to make them possible. During this time of offering, when we listen to how God is calling us to give back of uh, who we are and what we have, I invite you to join one of the existing circles and to give generously from your finances to support not only the circle ministries, but all of the ministries which are at work making a difference in people's lives. Your gift can be sent to the address that you see here on the screen or can be found on our website at browndeerumc.org. 
That's one word, browndeerumc.org. By the way, if you feel that the circle with, um, you feel that a circle with another focus or agenda would better fill your needs, please contact me through the church office and I will help to do all I can to make that possible. My friends, thank you in advance for your generosity in participation and giving. Remember, any gift labeled second mile giving uh, will be matched dollar for dollar up to a combined total of $25,000. This limited offer will double the impact of your gift. Again, if you did not get the mailing information just now from the screen, or you would like to give online, please go to our website, rounddeerumc.org. Thank you so much for your consideration and participation in this time of offering. God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor Ann. It is a great joy to be in ministry with you, and I'm so grateful for uh, how you lead our groups, or some of our groups, and your desire that everyone be able to be a part of the circles of connection. With each week's message, we find a way to integrate contemplative practices into our daily lives as a way of opening ourselves to the divine in deeper ways, thereby training our spirits for compassion in all things. This week's ritual action could include journaling as we suggested in the children's time. Take a moment each day to contemplate your own healing process, or it could be a contemplative moment of fixing something you've been putting off for a time. Does something need some super glue or spackling or mending? If so, do this with prayerful intention. You may want to put a note up to remind yourself about this. Find beauty within the imperfections of life and accept peacefully the natural cycle of growth and decay. Be reminded to offer grace for imperfections, for the beauty of the earth. I send you forth with this blessing. The world is so varied and so beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is found. And may the goodness of the creator, the companionship of Christ, and the insight of the spirit infuse your life now and always. And the beloved, cherished children of God say, Amen. Amen.